Good evening. What's going on, everyone? So there's a story going around about CMKM stock and how it's related to today's situation with direct registration. And I'm just going to tell you a story about this uh, CMKM fiasco. And uh, you can decide yourself if it's what you've been hearing from around the Internet. So Reddit has another story going around this evening, and I thought I'd tell the nonfiction version to help you understand the story. Let's begin. And a link to this article that I am referencing can be found in the description for your convenience. So the story. For new investors in the fun and wild penny stock realm, I guarantee most of them do not remember the infamous tale of CMKM Diamonds. Now, 13 unlucky years later, there are still many shareholders with the belief they are going to be rich, millionaire rich, even though the SEC halted the trading in the company CMKX in October of 2005. We all have witnessed a strong shareholder base with active investors. In this day and age, there is social media's Twitter and iHub in which hundreds of posts occur on the more popular securities. But to my two decades of experience, I have never seen anything like I did with CMKX. Over 40,000 investors fell victim to what could be the biggest penny stock scam ever, costing them in excess of $60 million. So what does a shareholder base of that size look like at a time when there was no Facebook or Twitter or even iHub? Well, just like any other excited investors, they used whatever tools and media streams they could to spread the word. PalTalk, a chat board still alive and well today, was the go-to hangout for investors. So you could think of it like today's Reddit. These chat rooms run by active shareholders could hold as many as 500 persons and would often be filled to the point you had to wait to try to get in. Could you imagine? <laughs> or a room reset would happen as a means to weed out those simply parked there but not actively listening. There were multiple rooms, some bigger than others, all dedicated to the diamond company, yet different by means of personality, structure, and belief level. These rooms lasted for years. They were filled with gurus, expert DDers, DJs, a little music never hurt here and there. Man, they had music popping back then. Damn, I want to meet some OG Reddit. And even lawyers that would break down the legal side of things. I mean, similar. this is almost like what we see today so far. With a group this large and diverse, someone knew someone or was an expert on something and added insight, wisdom, support, optimism, or entertainment to the group. To my surprise, 13 years later, a few rooms still exist. The numbers have diminished as many have lost hope chalked it up as a loss and a lesson learned, but the remainder formed a bond and friendship along the way. The Palatalk days were fun, as I stated. Many friendships were made. People of all ages and walks of life were brought together by common goal to become rich as the .0001 stock was rumored to be bought out at 0.54 per share and the diamond claims all around Devers and Newmont and others and, oh, I'm sorry, and other who's, who's who in the mining industry led investors to believe they were a part of something big in Saskatchewan, Canada. The 54 cent rumor was mentioned by the CEO, Urban Casavant, who was an active gambler in Las Vegas, who also had a taste for mining and auto racing. It was at these races where the rumors began to flourish amongst the shareholder community as Urban had used drag races to spread the word about his diamond company. As the racing circuit traveled each weekend, the CMKX Diamond covered Dragster and CMKX Billboard followed, gaining new investors along the way. For many, this was the first company they ever invested in, and when pitched 54 cents was coming and you can buy the shares at Trip or at Trip One, not only did they buy, but they told family, friends, and coworkers. Besides the races and pal talk, the top message boards at the time was Raging Bull, and the word quickly spread there also generating 1,000 posts a day and the birth of paid bashers. So that's when paid bashers that we see today were born, full circle. One basher got banned almost daily, but came back with a new name, but only with a letter or number off. This user must have had to change his name hundreds of times so he or she could continue to post negatively around the clock, literally 24 seven about the CEO and company. With all this happening and with, and with the share price so low, this was the first company I had witnessed trade in the billions of share volume per day. At that time, the volume ticker on the computer did not know how to compute that high a volume and would go to 
negative after 999,999,999. This amount of volume was flowing in and the stock would not go up. It stayed at 0 or 0 0.0001. I think I just found an example of seller boxing by accident. So that's awesome. See what reading does? The data and transfer agent stated the outstanding share count was only 703 million shares. Thus, the naked shorting talk arose. Naked shorting was running rampant in the markets at the time, and as the sex seemed to turn a blind eye on the subject, it even say there is no such thing, later court cases and laws revealed a different story. Our stock market is supposed to be run on supply and demand. The more the demand the stock goes up, the more supply the price tends to fall. With naked shorting a loophole brokerage house, uh, a loophole brokerage houses took advantage of, the house sold you the shares and placed a marker in your account, never going out to find the stock. Thus, the demand was not there, yet gave the impression that there was unlimited supply. The only way at the time to combat this evil doing and potentially catch them in a short squeeze was a cert pull. Shareholders quickly demanded to pull their shares out of the market and put those shares in their name versus street name and or seed and co. The cert pull was on and a lawyer out of Texas got involved and started calculating all the certs in hopes of proving or providing the naked short with a cert count larger than the 703 million outstanding shares number. So basically the idea is kind of what we're hearing today about pulling all the cert certs out in an amount greater than the outstanding shares number to prove that there was naked shorting. Now, as the count reached over 500 million, I recall the lawyer becoming more and more hush hush and a final cert count was sealed, I believe for court document reasons. Many shareholders could not get their certs. Many brokerages denied their ability to get a certificate. Why? And others had their shares wiped out of the account stating the firm deemed them as worthless. Scam or not, there are things that make one raise an eyebrow. For years and years, this went on. Rumor after rumor that a payday was coming. Popular shareholders from the tight-knit investor group soon passed from, from illness or old age. Members of the company, including the CEO himself, passed too. It is sad to see investors not live long enough to get the closure on this saga. Rumors and delays and court cases come and go and are still going on to this day. In fact, August 2018, next month, the DOJ, Department of Justice, and this article is written in 2018, by the way, is set for a trial and a few sentencings in September. The DOJ has slowly unraveled an elaborate scheme that includes money laundering and the selling of illegal unregistered shares. As with shareholders, many of the key culprits also passed away before being brought to justice. 13 years and still to this day, many believe that all of the legal matters going on at the moment are to create the illusion to the public that justice was done and the non-disclosure settlement payments will follow after. Only in Pennyland does stuff like this happen. It is my belief that there was dirty stuff going on all around. I believe the firms knew of the scheme by the shell owners and saw the certificates attempted to be registered from restricted to free trading and naked shorted the stock. I think there were multiple wrongs going on and no one is getting more than a slap on the wrist while the biggest losers in all of this, if there is not a settlement of any sort, are the shareholders who will have lost everything. The questions I have are why didn't the sex stop this racket sooner and deny that there was no such thing as naked shorting? Why were the brokerages and houses allowed to naked short the stock and illegally convert restricted stock into free trading? Last, why weren't the culprits brought to justice sooner as it's been 13 years and still no closure? As you can see, the company did not tell anyone to pull their certs. It was a colluded effort by retail that costed them millions of dollars and wasn't even settled until 2018, leaving them with nothing. Now, this is the case itself. It's linked right below. I'm going to link all this below for your convenience. Defendants, uh, I'm not going to read the names. Um, you can just see here that the calendar call, August 20th, 2018, that's like three years ago. So just, you know, take it into a, take it into account. That's all I'm going to say. Now, this is from the court document itself. Uh, it's linked in this article. So a false rumor has circulated that confuses the criminal prosecution in the District of Nevada with a civil suit out of the Central District of California that now has been dismissed. There are many variations of this rumor. However, in short, the Anderson civil case is not related to the Edwards criminal case. In Anderson, the plaintiffs allege that the SEC and other agencies of the U.S. government 
conducted a sting operation against illeg illegitimate brokers, dealers, market makers, hedge funds, and other persons and entities that had engaged in naked short selling of CMKM diamonds. Anderson Rev first amended complaint P-17, part 48. Essentially, the Anderson case involved allegations against the entire industry. In contrast, the superseding criminal indictment in the Edwards case charged a more clearly defined group of defendants, insiders at one company, CMKM, and people who enabled them. Additionally, in the course of investigating and litigating the Edwards criminal case, government personnel in the District of Nevada have not encountered any evidence indicating that a government agency conducted a sting operation against naked short sellers of CMKM stock. Government personnel in the District of Nevada have also not come across any evidence of any settlement fund, much less any settlement fund to with trillions of dollars, potentially available to pay possible claims of CMKM shareholders. The criminal investigation in the District of Nevada, resulting in the United States versus John Edwards et al. indictment involved no sting operation. We hope this statement clarifies the differences between United States versus John Edwards with the facts alleged in David Anderson versus Christopher Cox et al. The public is reminded that defendants are innocent until proven guilty. Thank you. Now, these are the court documents. A link will be provided as, as well for all this in the description. Now, the second superseding indictment on March 24th, 2010, the grand jury returned a sealed second superseding indictment with, which added the following defendants, Jeffrey Torino, Nikolaj Vizkovsky, and Jeffrey Mitchell. In addition, several new charges were added, alleging that certain defendants engaged in a conspiracy to conduct an enterprise engaged in a pattern of racketeering activity, a conspiracy to sell unregistered securities, and to commit securities fraud, and a conspiracy to commit money laundering. On May 6, 2010, the second superseding indictment was unsealed. And then paragraph 5 here in this actual indictment says, As part of the conspiracy and scheme, the conspirators fraudulently invoked Rule 144K and Regulation D to issue hundreds of billions of unregistered shares of stock without restrictive legends to themselves and their nominees, associates, alter egos, and straw purchasers. So, in this manner, the conspirators combine to fraudulently issue, offer, and sell hundreds of billions of unregistered and uh, purportedly free trading shares of stock to the investing public. While the stock of the corporate shells typically sold for less than a penny per share, the conspirators fraudulently induced thousands of investors to purchase hundreds of billions of unregistered shares of stock that had been illicitly issued without restrictions by their corporate shells. In aggregate, the conspirators defrauded investors of more than $70 million through this scheme. As part of the conspiracy, the members and associates of the enterprise combined and conspired to issue or cause the issuance of hundreds of billions of unregistered shares of stock and several cell companies or shell corporations which they controlled, specifically including but not limited to Pinnacle Business Management, CMKM Diamonds, ST George Metals Inc., SUGM, U.S. Canadian Minerals. I think uh, I've read enough. So, to put this back into perspective, what's going on in the community is that CMKM Diamonds was the one that did the cert poll. It's incorrect. It was CMKX. And they did a cert poll because they did it from social media. CM Diamonds was the one that had the insiders sell unregistered shares, which also costed their investors $70 million. So please be careful. Please read the due diligence. I'm going to link all this below. And just remember, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Everyone's going to try to take it away from you. This has nothing to do with the situation we're in today. And remember, in both scenarios, scenario number one with CMKX, October of 2005, October of 2005, it's almost October, October of 2005, they lost everything. They waited 13 years to find out they lost everything. And the other one? costed investors $70 million. So anyway, sorry, this was a very long one, but I had to get this out. Um, much love to everybody out there. Stay safe, stay logical, and I will talk to you tomorrow.